Okay. All right. Well, if you have your mini catalog with you tonight, we are going to start. And when I say mini, I'm talking about this book right here. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and let's turn to page 49. All right, so here we are. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in just a little bit. Excuse my arm there. And this is the part where I always forget this every single week, especially if you're brand new. I need to tell you, welcome to Be Creative Stamping. My name is Tammy Shia, and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I've been a demonstrator for 12 years. And so we're very happy to have new friends with us this evening, okay? So page 49, the Love of Leaves Bundle. When I first saw this stamp set, I really didn't think that much of it. I really did not give it a second look. But what I did notice here at the bottom of 49 I notice the dies, and if you've got your catalog in front of you, it'll be easier for you to see that these dies have stitching, and I'm going to show you some samples with the stitching, and this is what really caught my eye when browsing through the catalog, okay? So I'm going to show you that stamp set now in person. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I think I am. Okay. All right. Hang tight here. So the Love of Leaves stamp set is a photopolymer stamp. And what that means is when you stamp with it, and here's one of the leaves, you'll be able to see right through that. Okay. Yes, Linda, it took time for it to grow on me as well. And I just, I love the dies. They're so cool. I do want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, the greetings. They are different fonts. And let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six sentiments, okay? And we've got lots of fonts. I always love looking at the fonts, and I'm always looking for different kinds of fonts. Now, these leaves are not solid images. You're probably going to see some shading here. It's lighter in some areas and darker in the others. So when you stamp with this, you are not going to get a solid image. So I don't want you to panic, okay? Sometimes we panic when we stamp something and not all of the ink transfers to the paper. But in this case, the ink will not do that because there's a variation in these stamps. And you're gonna see that tonight when we do the stamping. Yes, Margot, I agree too. All right, now let's look at the dies, okay? These are the dies. You can see I've got one leaf here upside down. This die right here is stitching and you can actually stitch on a card layer. So we'll do that tonight, and you're gonna see how this die works, okay? Now here's the other really cool thing, and this happens for all of the leaves, okay? You can cut out your stamped leaf with this die, okay? And when you do that, you're going to get, and I'm gonna hold this up to the camera, you're going to get stitching all the way around the leaf. How cool is that? Just by using this die. Now, if you wanna kick it up a notch and you want stitching in the leaf, you stamp your leaf, you put this die on first, then, Put the stitched part see the stitching is separate you will lay the stitching on top and roll it through the machine and then you will get this look so it's up to you whether you want the stitching or not in your leaves so you have a choice so here are all the dies it's called the stitched leaves dies 
And um, I put this um, paper in a stand and now I can't slide the foot of it off, the base of it off, to get this paper out. So I'm sorry for the glare, but I, I just don't have enough strength to get this thing to come off. Okay, so here's the smaller leaf right here. I'm not even sure what kind of leaf you call that one, but here it is. See how it's cut and you get that stitching around the outline? And here it is when you use the stitching part. Here's another leaf and another leaf. Now I love these because you've got one leaf going towards the top or to the left and then you've got your other leaf going towards the right. Again, they also have the stitching and I know it's really hard for you to see that Cajun craze stitching. Um, here's another leaf here in Cajun Craze, and again, I've used the stitching right there, okay? And then here's a leaf, and this is with the Bumblebee cardstock, and I use stitching there. Now, remember this piece that I was telling you about? This is what it looks like, okay? So you can put that on a card layer or a card base. And that gives you a really cool effect, okay? So that's the Stitched Leaves dies. And tonight I'm gonna be using our new embossing machine and I'm gonna show you how to stamp and how to cut these, okay? All right. And let's see here. Um, now we're ready to look at the card. So this is the card that we're creating tonight and Lately, lots of demonstrators are creating slimline cards, and this is what a slimline card is, okay? It's just a skinnier card. Now, I have my slimline card going in this direction, north to south, but I want you to look at another slimline card that I made right here, and this, this was for Hostess Clubs last week when um, I had in-person classes. This one is going west to east, okay? Or I guess this would be landscape, and this is portrait, I believe, okay? All right, hey Billy, welcome. All right, so here you go. You can do the slimline card in either direction, okay? I'll be putting this card on my blog very soon and you'll be able to see which supplies I used and then how it was created, okay? But that was the card that we did last week in class and you can tell that I used that brushed metallic card stock for the stitched squares. But this was a super easy card to make, okay? All right, well, let's do measurements, okay? So this is for tonight, and I am going to give you a few minutes to do a screenshot if you want. Hopefully I won't, okay, I'm trying to get in close, but not, I gotta go this way give you a few minutes to get a screenshot or you can even take a picture with your phone, all right? And I'm going to explain the envelopes in just a minute, all right? I'll, I'll explain those. So give you a few minutes to do that. Let's see, put that there. All right. Simone, I love the effects of the dies too. They are, they're just so cool. Even if you don't get the stamp set, the dies, the other nice thing about the dies, you can use those throughout all four seasons. This will carry over, okay, into other seasons and holidays, not just fall and Thanksgiving. Hey, Carol, welcome from Michigan. We are happy to have you. All right, I'm gonna take this away, ladies, okay? And I will post these um, measurements again um, on this thread, okay? After the broadcast tonight, okay? 
Alrighty, so let me explain the envelopes. When I was creating the slimline card, of course Stampin' Up! does not carry um, long envelopes. And I did not want a white business envelope that you would mail a check in or mail a bill. I wanted something a little bit fancier. And so I found these craft envelopes on Amazon. And you can do a search. It's called Juveo 100 Pack, which means there are 100 envelopes in the package. They're number 10 craft business envelopes, and here are the measurements, four and one eighths of an inch by nine and a half inches. Hey, Monica, I know I love the dice too, I really do. So that's where I got my craft envelopes from. They were on Amazon. I want. I don't remember the price, to be quite honest, because I purchased them about two weeks ago, but I'm gonna say like $13 for 100, okay? Something like that, all right? So if you're interested in those, that is where I found them, okay? So we're actually gonna start with the envelope, and we're going to attach an envelope flap and the flap is going to measure, let's get out our ruler here, one and a half inches. And this is actually going to measure nine and a half inches, and my ruler goes to eight inches, okay? But nine and a half inches if you want to embellish the flap of your envelope. And if you've never done that before, I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. I am using the Gilded Autumn designer paper, which is amazing, all right? And we've already talked about that for a couple of weeks. I want these beautiful leaves to show. And so I'm going to take the seal and I'm gonna run it down the sides of the, of the designer paper. Now, you can also run the seal or your snail adhesive on the flap, okay? You can do it either way. I tend to do both ways. Um, so, and what I'm doing here is I'm just adding this piece of designer paper right along the score line, okay? Where that folds, all right? So there's the front of the envelope and this is the back, okay? Now I'm going to trim this off. And when you trim it off, it's super easy. You're just going to trim around this flap. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So I'll do that real quick because whoever wins tonight's card you're going to receive it in this envelope. All right. And this is a little stickier than usual. That is because I put the adhesive on the designer paper instead of the envelope flap, okay? All right. And then I'm just gonna turn the corner here. All right. What's really nice about decorating the flaps of envelopes, we all have um, scrap paper, and a lot of times you can use your scrap paper to put on the, on the flaps, okay? So there's our beautiful envelope. Now it feels like a special little gift through the mail instead of a business envelope, okay? So that's why I went with the craft and you can also stamp the front as well. And we might do that if I remember, <laughs> okay? Hello, Cheryl, welcome. Nice to have you tonight. All right, well, we're all ready to get started here. Again, this is the card we're creating. I'm going to bring in Thank you, someone just posted for us. Um, they're $13.99 for 100, a pack of 100. So thank you so much for posting that, Sarah Race. I appreciate that. So this is what we're making, <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you how to cut and measure, okay? 
So we're gonna start with their Stampin' Trimmer, and I'm gonna bring these measurements over here so that I don't mess anything up. <clears throat> and we're going to need, if I can pick up my paper, a sheet of very vanilla cardstock, and it's eight and a half by 11 inches, okay? All right, so our measurements. Um, we know that one side of the card is eight and a half inches, so we're gonna leave this, okay? There's no cutting here. I'm gonna rotate the cardstock to the 11 inch side, and I'm going to cut it at seven inches. Now, I have this left over, and I can use this tonight to stamp my leaves, okay? Now, I'm still on the seven inch side, okay? This is seven inches, and this is the eight and a half inch side. So on the seven inch side, I do want to score it, and I wanna score it at three and a half. So I'll show everyone that real quick. I might have to zoom in a little bit. All right, so there's the three right there. And that right there is three and a half, okay? So at the three and a half mark, I'm gonna use this scoring tool, okay? Mine's at the top. I'll just give that a nice little score line right there, okay? And that is my card base. And I think that's all the cutting that we need to do. I've already cut the other pieces. All right. The next piece that you're going to need is the early espresso, all right? Now the early espresso is measuring three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. And my ruler only goes to eight, but it's eight and a quarter inches, okay? Um, Excellent question, Sue. I did not use the very vanilla thick cardstock for this. And it's because I really didn't think about it, but I love using our thick cardstock for card bases. So if you know, if I were to create it again, I probably would use the thicker cardstock because I do have it. Okay. So great question. Hey Joyce, welcome. Yes, and Joyce. You can put your card together because I know you were not in class last week, but um, yeah, you'll be able to do it. Now, Joyce, this is a different card tonight than the one that we created last week, okay? You're going to need a sheet of designer paper. Now, here is the Gilded Autumn. Okay, Joyce, I don't want you to cringe. Joyce, uh, because... Um, I know Joyce doesn't like me to cover up the foil, okay? But I am gonna flip it over, Joyce, and we're gonna use this side of the designer paper tonight, okay? And this is going to measure three inches by eight inches, okay? And so those are the layers that you need for your card base. So let's go ahead, we're gonna get the card base together. And then we will start some stamping, okay? So I'm using my bone folder. I wanna get a nice crease right there along the fold. Um, this looks like adhesive right here, and I'm gonna be covering that up, so I really don't need to worry too much about that. And by the way, my seal is just about empty, so I'm probably gonna have to, <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to stop and fill this, okay? Because I am close to the end. I know, Joyce, it's very painful. I'm covering up the gold foil over here. And this is such a pretty side anyway. I love this pumpkin paper. Love, love, love. And it's Gilded Autumn. And we've been using this designer paper the last couple of Wednesday nights. So this should be familiar to you. I'm going to center this if I can. I think that'll do it. And now we're gonna put some adhesive on the back of the Early Espresso. All right. 
This stuff loves to stick to my fingers. Okay, let's make sure I'm opening the card correctly. All right. I now love those pumpkins. Oops, hang on. We have covered the pumpkins up. All right. All right, so there we go. Okay, so that card base is done. I'm gonna refer to the other card base. On this one, I actually did a strip of cardstock. So the layout is a bit different, okay? But again, it's still two slim cards, okay? And you'll see that card again. It'll be on my blog. It'll have measurements and all that good stuff. I'm going to set this aside and we're going to do some stamping now. So let's use that extra piece of paper. I am working on a table that folds, and so it's not a wood table, and it has a bit of give, and since these are photopolymer stamps, they don't have a lot of cushion because they're not rubber stamps, so I'm gonna use this pad to help me in stamping, okay? Now we're gonna start with Cajun Craze tonight. and we're going to ink up the largest flower, okay? And then I'm gonna stamp it about right here. All right, and so that's pretty dark. It even looks a little bit darker than this, and I'm pretty sure I've used the same ink pad. So another thing you might wanna do is maybe stamp it again. Okay, and that's a lighter version. So um, it depends on um, it depends on how you want your leaf to look. Do you want it to have more of a watercolor effect, or do you want more of a bold um, um, effect? Okay. So um, I'm not sure what I'll do tonight. Also, I, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you again. I'm going to ink it. I'm going to stamp off gently and then stamp again. And let's see what this one looks like, all right? So in all honesty, this one is my favorite, and all I did was to stamp off gently and then stamp onto the cardstock, okay? So we will be cutting that out shortly. We're gonna get the other leaves stamped before we do that. All right. So now we're gonna move on to this leaf right here, and we're going to ink it in Bumblebee, Bumblebee ink, okay, which is one of our new in colors. And again, I've been stamping off so that my leaves aren't too dark, but honestly, it is a personal preference, all right? Let's do another one. This one's going to be full strength, okay? Let's see what that one looks like. All right? So it depends on the look that you're going for, and I actually like both of these. All right, let's see what else we need to stamp. All right. I'm going to bring in some more very vanilla cardstock. And now we're going to stamp this leaf right here, and we're going to do it in mint macaron. Okay, now this time I'm gonna do full strength, and then let's stamp it again and see which one we like better. And by the way, when I am working with these leaves, this is what I did today. I stamped a bunch of these in each color and I cut them all out and I've packaged them within the stamp set. So when I go to make my next card, I already have leaves that are stamped and cut out. So that can save you a little bit of time. All right, and now we're gonna use some crumb cake Okay, and we're going to take this little stamp right here, the little guy, 
and we'll ink that one and then let's stamp off all right so that's what we have there and we're, we aren't using this leaf tonight but let's just look and see how it stamps all right I'll turn it this way so you can see the shadowing it's lighter in this area right here and this is crumb cake ink all right so I'm gonna move all my stamps and ink out of the way and we're going to be bringing in our new embossing machine all right okay so now we get to do some cutting uh, which name? Let's see. Um, Simone, are you talking about this color? This is mint macaron. This is crumb cake. Okay. Um, just let me know if there's another color. I'll go over them again. This is bumblebee. And this is Cajun craze. So hopefully that helps. All right. I'm gonna zoom out, okay? So you can see the entire machine. All right. And let's get my platforms. I'm gonna start with number one, okay? I know that I need number one and remember, all of our platforms have a one. This is our new cutting machine. It's called the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine, okay? All right, so platform number one. Now tonight, ladies, I'm gonna use the new magnetic platform, and this is a platform that I have never showed you before, all right? And it looks like this and it has a number five on it, all right? Now, this is where you want to do your cutting. This is a self-healing mat. So you can see some cutting has been done on it, but it's called self-healing, okay? Meaning it's okay to cut on it, and you know, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's gonna be okay, all right? And those cuts, um, they kind of soften up, I guess. Here's the other side of the plate, and it's a complete magnet, all right? The entire thing is a sheet, a magnet sheet, all right? So when you get the magnet sheet, you also get another sandwich diagram, all right? And this diagram is telling me that I need number one, which is right here. And then I need number two. So let me find number two. It's right here. See that number two? So that's next. And then it says that I need number five. Well, number five is the magnetic platform. So that's next, all right? Okay, and now I'm ready for my stamped image all right so we're gonna start with this one maybe we'll do it like this I'm gonna pull it out some and the reason I'm using the magnetic platform is because I want the the leaf to stay in place and I want this stitching to stay in place okay I'm gonna use this leaf tonight I will definitely use the other leaf at some point, so I will cut it out, and I'll put it in a, in a cello bag, and I'll put it inside my stamp set. So I will have it for another card. All right, now I'm doing this sitting down, which I usually don't do. Now to get your little die straight, you can take your, take your pick tool and just kind of wiggle it around until you get it in the place that you want it, all right? So that's one leaf. Let's go ahead and get another leaf cut, all right? 
So I think I'm going to use this crumb cake leaf here. So I'm lining that up. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but this is a little heart, okay? And so this stitching is a little heart with stitching. How cute is that? So you can use it for Valentine's Day. All right, so I've laid that in there and I'm just gonna straighten it up a bit. All right, just like that. And I'm using this to help me. Now notice, my dies didn't move. They didn't wiggle. And that's because this plate is an entire magnet, okay? It doesn't have little magnets inside of it. It's a magnet sheet, okay? All right, now we know we're gonna need number three. We've gotta cover this up, put the top on the sandwich. I'm gonna straighten up my plates and we're gonna roll this through, all right? And I'm sorry for the shaking of the camera. And it, it's super quiet, isn't it? It's just kind of gliding along. And now at this point, I can take this out. And there's my stitching right there. Okay, so that one is done. And now let's look at this one. I've taken that out. Look at the stitching that occurred on the paper. And then here is the leaf. Okay, so that's the leaf in crumb cake. Now we're going to go back. And by the way, I can roll from either side. Okay, I don't have to push it back this way to cut. All right, let's go ahead and let's get this one cut out. Okay, so we have two more leaves to do. All right, so I think I have that one where I want it. Yes, I love that the plates have numbers because um, if you don't use this machine every day, over time you forget what the sandwich is supposed to be. So I'm loving the numbers. I think it's going to be very helpful for, um, for my customers. I really do. All right. I'm gonna trim this with the scissors just so I cut this one. Now, I still love these other leaves, so later I will cut them and use them on a card later, okay? So, you know, don't toss out your other leaves. They can be used for other projects. All right, so here is our other leaf. Now, unfortunately, I don't know all my leaves. I wish I, wish I did. So if you all know what kind of a leaf that is, let me know, and let me know what this is. <laughs> I should know, but I don't. <laughs> All right, so here is our outline. Also, I think you could always lay this on top first and then lay your outline on here if you wanted. I don't think it has to be done in this order, all right? Okay. And then I like to bring my take your pick tool in and that just kind of helps me line things up. And I think that will work. And this is right on the edge of the magnetic platform. So hopefully it is going to work. Okay, here we go. We're gonna roll this on through here. Sorry about the shaking camera. All right. So here we are, we've got the stitching on this sheet of paper. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can pick this one up. And there's the stitching, isn't that pretty? It just, it really just gives it a really nice effect. 
And now our last one here. All right, and again, look, there's the stitching on the cardstock. I'm gonna lift that up. And then there's my stitching there. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful leaf. And again, I would have overlooked this set completely if it hadn't been for the dies because I just kind of looked at the stamp set and just kind of flipped the page. So, all right, I think that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and move it and we're gonna assemble our card. So I'm gonna bring this one back in. Now you're gonna notice that we didn't cut all the leaves i've already cut some of those for you okay so you wouldn't have to watch me <laughs> um you know cut all of these leaves all right so one thing i want to show you as we get ready to build our, our card i've got some circles here and they are stitched circles so let me show you where that's from these are the stitched shapes, and I used this one right here, so it's second to the largest, okay? Now, these are a staple for me. I use these constantly. So if you're new to stamping and you're interested in our new embossing and cutting machine, this is a great place to start because this can be used on every single card that you make, all right? Alrighty, so I've already cut those out, and this is mint macaron, and when you cut it out, this is what you get. <laughs> oh, good, Sue. I'm so glad you love it. I'm so glad. Here, here's the stitch circle. Isn't that beautiful? And it's in mint macaron. Now, let me show you, I actually embossed the circle so let me show you that embossing folder where did i put it oh here it is right here okay so these two embossing folders are brand new they're called wrapped in texture and you get two embossing folders and these are the skinny ones and this one has dots and this one has the shape that i've embossed tonight all right, now to show you where they are in the mini, because they can be tough to find, you might overlook it. Whoops, something stuck to my catalog. It's in the heartwarming suite, very beginning, and they're right here. Page nine at the bottom, wrapped in texture, all right? So that's where those two embossing folders are. It's part of that coffee cup suite, all right? All right, so we're, we're using three of these, so I'm ready to attach them, and I'm gonna use the seal. And what I like to do is, for spacing, I like to go ahead and put one at the top, Okay, and then we're gonna put one at the bottom. Uh, I'm out of adhesive. So now I get to show you how to change the stamp and seal adhesive. I am going to open this up. I think I'm gonna open it. There we go. Okay, this is what I'm going to toss. And this, is a brand new one that I've already taken out of the package. Here is a big wheel and a small wheel. Okay, big and then a small one. And then I'm just going to insert that. So it's really easy to take out and refill, okay? So now let's go ahead and see if we can use this one, yeah. And then we'll put this one about right here. And then this one's gonna go in the middle, okay? Ooh, got some adhesive that time. 
All right, there we go. If you ever have trouble advancing your stamp and seal, do a little check mark, okay? And that might help with that. We're gonna center this and put it about right here, okay? So that's where we are so far. We're now going to be popping up our leaves. And as you can tell, I'm gonna trim this stem just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna trim the stem about that much. You don't have to trim it at all if you don't want to. And then we'll put the adhesive on here. These are the dimensionals. And we'll put it about right there, okay? Now we're going to add two leaves here. So here's one of them. And again, I, um, I did, you know, stamp and cut some of those before class. This is crumb cake. I'm just putting some glue dots there. And then I'm going to position this about right there. I could have used stamp and seal as well, okay? Didn't have to be that. Then with the mint macaron, I'm going to add a dimensional. And then I'll kind of layer this one about right there. And I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit since we're working pretty close now on the card. Okay, remind me, we'll come back and do the thread. Okay, remind me. All right. Now we also have leaves. This is crumb cake and bumblebee and mint macaron, okay? Now I'm going to take the mint macaron and I'm just gonna add a couple of glue dots back there and I'm going to attach it to the crumb cake, okay? So those two are attached now and then I'll add glue dots to the crumb cake. And I just do that because it's super quick. And then I'll put that one about there, okay? And if you want to trim these, you can. I think I'll trim the stems a little bit. And I even trimmed it like at an angle, okay? And then this is where I'm gonna add dimensionals again, whoops. That wasn't in a very good place. Okay. If you're brand new this evening and just joining us, say hello so that your name can be in the drawing tonight. All right, so I think that will work there, okay? Thank you, Dawn. Um, we'll come back and do the words, okay? Let's just do focus on our leaves right now. All right, now here's our Cajun Craze leaf. And this time we'll go back to dimensionals. I love this leaf. It's not a maple leaf. I'm not sure what kind of a leaf it is, but it's really pretty. If you all know the names of these leaves, please share them with me. All right, now this one, we're gonna position about right here, okay? And then we're gonna go back, we're gonna get that bumblebee, all right? Now this little bumblebee leaf is, is darker than this one, and we're gonna pop it up. And we'll add it about right there, okay? So let's go ahead and add ribbon. Um, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but I have like double bows. Do you see that, those two different um, loops? I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? I am just cutting a piece of linen thread. It's probably eight or nine inches long. I didn't measure. 
now I've cut another piece of linen thread at approximately the same size, okay? <laughs> Nancy, I love it. Nancy says, all I know is about leaves is that they grow on trees. And that's, that's pretty much what I know, Nancy, to be quite honest. I remember being a little girl and my grandmother, she knew every tree and every flower. I mean, she knew them all, and I, I was always so impressed by that, but you know, I didn't learn anything, evidently. So, all right, see how I've tied those two strings together? Now I'm separating, I'm separating the bows, all right? And you might be able to see it better on the picture. I'm gonna cut these tails, because they're way too long. I'm going to take a glue dot and put it on the center of that knot. And then I'm going to add it to the stem, and I think you're going to be able to see the bow better. So there's the bow now. See, you've got the two different um, loops there. So hopefully you can see that. All right, we're going to do one more bow down here. Or should I say two? Two. This is our linen thread, and you can find this in our annual catalog. And it does come on a roll like this now. And as you can see, I haven't measured these. I've just made them long enough so that I can um, tie a bow. It's kind of like I'm tying my shoe. And so that's way too big. So this is when I adjust it. And now I can trim these tails, add my glue dot. I'm so glad you like it. I'm pretty tickled about this card. I like it. All right, I'm gonna trim this a little bit more and I'm gonna show you this one close up. First of all, let me separate those two loops so that you can see that. Hang on, I'm having a hard time separating this one okay and now I'll show you close up all right so you can kind of see that I hope all right now we're gonna do the words I want to show you where this die is this is in all dressed up this is when you make that cute little purse and you can cut out the shoes and the lipstick this is in the annual book and the dies are called All Dressed Up. And this is the actual die that I used. So I've already taken the time to cut it out in very vanilla cardstock. And look, it has stitching, just like the leaves have stitching. So I thought that was pretty cool. We're gonna use Early Espresso. And let's see. I'm closing this ink pad, it was not closed. Okay, this may take more than one try. Okay, so I did cut a few of these. All right, let's see if I can get this on here. I did. I'm so glad you're in my life. Isn't that an awesome greeting? All right, let's go ahead and pop this up. Wouldn't you just love to receive a card that said that? I'm so glad that you're a part of my life. Think about how many people we should tell that to, you know? All right, and I'm just gonna kinda center that there. Yeah, Joyce is saying, I have other leaves from a couple of years ago, but the dyes for this make all the difference, and this will have to be <laughs> on my next order. <laughs> You're right, Joyce, it will. The dyes make a huge difference.